What happens if you have a family of bigots or a family of individuals that hold political views that might be deemed racist or unfortunate? Well, Aubrey Perry, who is an American-born individual now living in Australia, says that when she grew up, she noticed that her parents had some points of views that she disagreed with. For instance, she said that her uh, parents would use words like greaseball, wetback, spick, or beaner when referring to Mexicans, but she never really pushed back against those things. Well, now she's saying that she doesn't want to enable her parents anymore, and she put them on blast in one of the most interesting ways imaginable. Now, the Melbourne-based artist and writer found her mother's name when she was scanning through the list looking for white supremacist William Johnson Perry, and then Perry saw her mother's name listed alongside white supremacists as well as an Islamophobic pastor and was horrified. So she then finds out that her mom is a fan of Trump, she's supporting Trump, and she's posting all sorts of racist memes on her Facebook page. And she found that particularly alarming because her mom teaches English as a second language to college students. So she was like, how can I have my mom be this xenophobic, this hateful, and then work with these college students like this? Well, and by the way, a lot of times uh, people who came from outside the country, so the very people that she's privately insulting, she goes to teach. Yes, exactly. That's how she makes her money. So Aubrey writes about this um, in the Sydney Morning Herald. And she says, hateful memes, ugly language, and appearance-based attacks targeted at Hillary Clinton stacked up. And not just hateful, but off-topic and malicious, calling Hillary ugly, old, and screechy, an unlikable old bag. The woman card stinks, my mother wrote. My mother, a college instructor, she should know better. She's no internet troll, is she? Um, is she? Now she wrote to her mom and said that your Twitter feed makes me disappointed and embarrassed of you as a person, a supposed critical thinker, and my mother, shocked. Now, what she decided to do next is kind of interesting. She took screen grabs of all the hideous things her parents post online on their social media accounts and put them in a public forum so everyone can see. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning behind that was, I don't want to enable my parents to be like this anymore. I want to call them out. I want to change their behavior. I want them to possibly change their point of view. And unfortunately, that would never happen if you approach it from that perspective. But it does bring up an interesting question. When you exist in a family of hateful people, how do you start a conversation or how do you change that rhetoric? Is there even a way to do that? So no one's a winner in this story if you ask me. Um, and, and then she later cut off access to her kids uh, for, the, for her mom and dads, the grandparents obviously. Yeah. So I don't, really don't like the way any of this went down. Um, and, and I think she's right about one thing. So I think she should have challenged her parents much earlier on which is really her main thesis, mm -hmm. and that I agree with. And so to answer your question, Anna, I think you do it by engaging in that conversation. And you know, I talk uh, a lot on the show, and so do you, about changing culture, and culture is very, very important, uh, maybe the most important and powerful thing there is. And so we have some obligation to change the culture in a positive way uh, on a macro scale, but you should also do it inside your home, right? If you have some a family member calling people, you know, grease backs and wetbacks or whatever, grease balls, wetbacks and stuff. Um, say, hey, you know, that's not cool. And and say, look, I got a friend who's X Y Z, right? And you know, if he was in the room, he'd be really upset by that. Personalize it, make them think about, it. hey, mom, you teach those kids. Weren't you telling me the other day that Juan was really doing well? I made up a nice Damn. Latino name there. Okay. Why you gotta be named Juan? Huh? I'm just <laughs> it's because they're Latino. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and if you had done that all those years, maybe we wouldn't be where we are today. But given where we are today, I'm like, Jesus Christ, can you imagine finding your mom on a white supremacist website? I can't imagine it at all. Um, and I would be very shocked if, if, if I did. Uh, mortified, but, mortified. Yeah. On the other hand, what's the need to put your parents on blast in public? Yeah. I just, I don't see how that's productive. Uh, and, and then cutting off the access to the kids to me is, Nuclear, right? Now, no, now, I, I think they made a good on. decision. Hold on. It, now, it, this is a case where it might be justified to go nuclear because 
I don't want my kids hearing that kind of racist talk mm -hmm. and then getting influenced by that and then they grow up in that culture. Mm -hmm. So I get it, I get it, but I just wish that there was a thousand other efforts done before you went nuclear publicly and you went nuclear within the family saying eh, you're not going to get to see your grandkids anymore. Yeah, look, I don't know, actually I do know, I wouldn't post screenshots of terrible things my parents have done and post it all over the internet. Um, but if my parents were like her parents and I had a child, I certainly would not allow my child to be around them. I just wouldn't, right? I think that that kind of toxic environment is dangerous and it basically takes the country back from all the progress we've made when it comes to you know, accepting one another, loving one another. I want my child to be smarter than that, right? Um, at the same time, I think that the best way to change culture, honestly, is to rebel when you're young. And hmm. and it's hard because you definitely face a lot of consequences for doing that. Like, I'll give you examples, specific examples in my context. Growing up, I was in a very traditional Armenian household, right? My parents are not hateful in any way, but because of what Armenians have experienced, you know, in the past, like, they wanted me to to date Armenian guys, to marry an Armenian guy, keep it in the culture, you need to have Armenian babies, you know, we got to keep our culture alive. I don't like Armenian guys. It's not that I don't like them, I'm not... You didn't happen to meet an Armenian guy that you liked. I just did it, yeah, and I, I went for Latino guys because that's the community that I grew around and I love the culture and I was attracted to it and so as a result I've always dated Latino guys. And at first there was a lot of pushback from my parents. And it was like, no, what are people going to think? Because the Armenian community, it's not just my parents, it's the Armenian community as a whole at the time that really wanted all their you know, kids to be with Armenian people. Anyway, I was like, I don't care what the community says. I care about my life and I care about being happy. And I want to fall in love with someone and marry them and not have to worry about you know, outside influences you know, changing my opinion or making decisions for me. And sure enough, slowly but surely, my parents became a lot more open-minded. And the, one, yeah. the first thing I said to them was, hey, you came to Los Angeles, one of the most diverse places in the United States. If, if you didn't want me to be with anything other than Armenians, you made a bad decision. Yeah. You know? uh, my dad has become a lot more liberal throughout his life. Uh, and he was never a bad guy. He was never, I mean, look, I was, maybe I was a bad guy too. I was a liberal Republican, right, at the time, as uh -huh. my dad was. But, but from time to time, he'd look around New York City and he'd say, last days of Pompeii. Right, mm -hmm. and he'd have that kind of attitude, which he doesn't have at all anymore. And and we all grew up together, and we challenged each other, we talked it through, etc. And we, and and we all, and my dad and I both became atheists slightly different times, was similar, and we, you know, and and that happened through our conversations and mm -hmm. through being open to, to new things. And yes, it's not just Armenians. Almost, every culture, almost has every something. culture, uh, certainly immigrant cultures here in America. You stick with your own. You stick with your own. You know. So did my parents want me to marry Turkish? Of course they did, because mm -hmm. that's just the culture that they grew up in. So they'd be, they would have found it just literally foreign to be like, oh yeah, sure, marry someone who's Indian. What? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, but I dated uh, girls who were, first Katie, was my high school sweetheart was, you know, s super white, that's a funny way of putting it, but Irish, German, French, everything, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, an Argentinian girl, and then a South Asian Indian girl, uh, and then Venezuelan, and then Jamaican. And Damn, then you've been Ch all over the globe. <laughs> and then Chinese. <laughs> and so, by, and by the way, there's a reason for that. My culture was not a Turkish culture. It was first and second generation immigrant in America culture. Mm -hmm. That's how I grew up. So in East Brunswick, New Jersey, where I grew up, everybody was either Indian or Chinese or Jewish or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and so that was the group that I knew, right? And so, you know, and then by the way, there was a thousand other nationalities and races and religions that I dated, thank God, okay? <laughs> and eventually my parents were like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, we live in a different country. And so they love my wife now, who's Chinese. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we grow together and that, that's how we get to a better place. But that's gradual and no one meant any harm by any of that, yeah. right? So when it gets to this place and then you make it public, it's just a, a, a little ugly and I, and I wish that it, it had gone in a better route.